Hello, everyone. This is Akata Vesta. Thank you for joining me. Today, I'm not going to talk about astrology. There is some topic that happened in the last few days that bring my attention to the topic of what is a woman? In its specific, what make a woman spiritual? Why I am concentrated in talking about woman instead of us as human in general? Because this topic is much related to the woman world. There's a few days ago, a post in um, Facebook that's being reposted by a brother whom I love, that I know him a little bit. And I think he has posted with best intention. The post is being written by another woman. First of all, let me read you the content. Otherwise, it wouldn't make any sense. The post it started with. It saddened me deeply to observe how disconnected women are from nature. It is glaringly obvious to me that without this connection, there can be no link to the spiritual realm especially for magnetic alchemical women. Our connection to the cosmos and its wisdom embodied in Sophia is through the childbirth from her body, our planet. Only through this can we tape into her resources and the inheritance of our ancestors. The life force gene and the wisdom of our evolution. The indigenous shamans people from whom we originate have always understood this. The sacred mother feminine represents life and creation and the most powerful energy. In India, she was called Shakti. Although the caste system fell under the matrix of Saturn, this energy locked within us is our liberation to flow through our bodies and mind, connecting heavens and earth through the Trinity with the divine spark that ignites in our heart. The science that separates us from the earth and cosmos, teaching that we ourselves a god and everything else is artificial, luciferian, rebel against the mothers and acknowledgement of the right of nature and against the higher right of the unity of the free place, the total fallen rebellious, the Murgog, your war in his ignorance took power and declared himself the creator by becoming an architect of the matrix. It is the matrix that Sophia refuses to recognize as the mother of the creator and claims that we live in an artificial stimulation programmed by her artificial. It is a virus in the mind. It is the impulse that wants to flee the to Mars, still colonizing, taking over and controlling organic creation, out of fear of not surviving because it doesn't know eternal life. That's the human ego, trying to deceive nature with its fears and to illegally devour her and her resources. Those who don't dwell with nature in the womb and don't feel this sacred connection, all beings and spirits of nature, 
their house of power and element, can only exist in the mind and have access to the holographic artificial intelligence that programs the astral with its imitations of sacred creation. Ancient goddess sculptures with sapphire head, they knew the matrix was built on the mind. These people have no respect for the earth and its body, which has birthed them and give them life through millions of ancestors who live in us and who we are ourselves, and without whom we would be here, nor do they respect their own bodies and the gift of fate they have received. They want an artificial god who programs the artificial reality from them without love and respect, without higher spiritual meaning, without honor and sacrality. Human nature without the spark of God is worse than that of an animal, because the animal doesn't take more than what is needed for life. It doesn't explode greed and thus feels no survival fear in its vomit brain which stresses humans all the time and which they have to strangle dependencies because they can't control it themselves. On the other hand, life on earth as space and the spirituality itself is a waste of life and one's own will. The energy of this efficient and creative mind created through the spirit in matter both poles are promoted through polarized matrix games. The golden means is the connection of Christ and zero point departure. This path is determined by our life choices, character, strength, intentions, and the higher feelings. And by learning humility with nature and living in harmony with it, and all other beings on our planet. In fact, it cannot be deceived by techniques or bought as a pattern, and it is our personal path, but not in isolation from the world, but in good balance with it, with what is real and not with the illusion of an artificial world that lies. The female body is part of Sophia mother body, and it is not about any cult or feminism, but about a, about a return to truth before the invasion of artificial god of the archons and the Yahwa system, natives, shamanisms with Gnostic Christianity. What saddens me about this message as a whole is with good intention acknowledging that today we live in this matrix, this Maya, where we are being teached, we are being enslaved into a certain belief systems that we have lost our natural connection with nature, with curation, with God. First of all, why in the hell it is started by blaming those women, only women in this case, that has no connection with nature by generalizing the fault, the blame game once again on the shoulder of a woman. That in itself is totally bigotry of putting down once again woman as the soul responsible of our today's world. 
And what more that make me to consider this post more than it merit is. The division and the sole purpose on emphasizing the creation itself is only by woman because of the womb of a woman. A womb without seed, there's no creation. Let this sink in. A womb Without seed, there is no creation. We, as a human species, we do not survive by own, by one sex only. And by blaming those women who might not be spiritual aware or hasn't done their inner work in their journey. I find it pure accusation. We do not know people's story. We do not know what point that they are walking in their life. We don't know everybody's stories. So much is being hidden. If you believe in Akash, if you believe in reincarnations, that in life we do not always come back here in this planet only as a woman. Today I am a woman. In many lifetimes I have seen my past life that I was a woman. But there are also lifetimes that I was man. Why is that? Because our soul journey needs to be on both sides, on both sexes, and also to experience not only as a good people, but also bad people. In our past, we were one of those oppressors. We rape, we killed, we rob. That also part of our soul journey. There is no light without darkness. There is no female without male. If today I consider myself fortunate because I am born as a woman and I am being given these golden opportunities to bring out the divine feminine, feminine aspect to this world today, that doesn't condemn who are born men. That they have no say, they have no part in our creation. Each of us, every single one of us, has contributed to the creation of this world. If today if today's world is not perfect, we have also been part of it. The polarity in dividing sexes, religions, countries, races are the exact reasons why we end up in this matrix. If we insist in always giving the glory of Sophia Mother, whom I love tremendously, whom I have personal connection with, 
I receive the music tone from her. I will never downplay the importance of Mother Sophia in our cosmos. But that doesn't mean there is also other part as well. In our spiritual journey, some may be awakened some 10 years ago, 20 years ago. These people have walked the path before us. They have accumulated knowledge and wisdom before us. And because they are the path finder, they see through the matrix. Those truly are wicked, men and women, are given their assistance. They are holding their hands out to assist those that walk behind them. In my personal journey, I have met many of them. Many spiritual awakened sisters. I can give you so many names. I have Janet. I have Zuos. I have Laura. I have Onser. I have Rohaya. I have Carol. I have Shannon. I have many others, sisters, that they have seen me when I know nothing better in life. When I was crying, when I was down on my knees. Not once, these people look me down. They are there to share their wisdom. And most importantly, they are there to share their love without condition, without expectation. They are the seeders. They see it. If it takes me one month, one year or 10 years to make this seed bloom, it's my life journey. No one can push it, no one can force it. No one can blame me for not walking fast enough. Divine timing. The divine know the timing for each of us to blossom into the spiritual persons that we are. And I also have many brothers. I have Michael. I have Peter, I have David, I have Hector, I have Stephen. All these names, I love them deeply, tremendously. They have done the same as my other sisters. Do they have less importance to walk us through into the new paradigm? I don't think so. If you think about this, if you agree with that, I'm sorry. I cannot give you my agreement. A highly spiritual woman or man will never say to you, you are not good enough, you are behind.
will never look down on you, at you. They wait patiently. If anyone say that to you, know that they are the fault. That's it. <clears throat> they are the fault spiritual person. They are not your people. Know the difference. In my work, I have been given the privilege to see into many people's life, to know the trauma, the drama, the abuse they have gone through. This only make me more humble each day in seeing how a person comes to be the persons that they are today. If this takes them more time to deal with their shadows, their wounds, their fears, so be it. Be patient. There's no blame game. There's not a competitive path who work faster than the others. Know the difference. A person that today may not be able to connect themselves with the spiritual realm We, as starseed, as spiritual awakened person, the only work that we have is to plant that seed. If one day that person down the line, in one month, in one year, in ten years, they remember what you have done for them, what you have said. This is a lifetime of achievement. In particular with women, When, in many lifetimes, we have suffered severely for who we were, for speaking our truth. With that, we were raped, we were killed, we were burned. And in this lifetime, that it takes so much courage to finally bring back our voice, to stand once again for the truth, the truth itself, nothing else, it is a long suffering, painful process. And I know many of us have suffered so much today for being who we are. And if we see people that is not able to do this, no judgment there. Be patient. That's all we are being asked. I want to read you a particular passage, excerpt from the book Anna, The Voice of the Madalinas, by Claire Hassel. Lifting the suppressed feminine voice. 
Miriam of Tana. I know that you have many questions to ask of me. I understand that I have been quite a mystery package. I am one whose time has come to emerge out of obscurity and to bring light to so much that has been confusing and unnecessarily compromising. I will bring forth my understandings and my perceptions as best I can through the octaves of light and through this instrument. However, know this, my dears, this one who is speaking cannot be limited by name or feature of presence in one singular embodiment. For I am much more. I shall introduce you to my relationship with my beloved Yosra and my functions therein. My children shall be introduced. I will also speak of my spiritual work with the Madalinis, both women and men, and how we create an alchemical cup with Yosra, in which to transmute fear-based consciousness and assist the liberated energy to express as harmony and loving kindness. I join with the others who will speak of those times when we removed ourselves from this world, how we sealed ourselves up in caves and climbed to the high places where we practiced the resurrection and conception practices known to the Madalena order. We, who are the daughters and sons of Isis, a name for the Great Mother, we will share a portion of that which has been hidden and allow the reminder to rest as seed in the ground of consciousness until there is a readiness for more. This is wisdom. There is so much conditioned fear. It is best to give more light only when there is true receptivity and benefit. I say to you again, it is time now for the fear that has caused our voices to be laid to rest, for those who have been silenced to speak at last. May all beings hear the mother's gentle voice before she is required to use a much louder one. May all beings experience the ultimate liberation within and beyond form. May all beings know peace. May all suffering cease. Amen and Amen. The opening of the mouth. In oneness with our Christ Madalena sisters and brothers and with the councils of light under the auspices of the Divine Mother, Father. We wish to initiate what the Egyptian alchemists call the opening of the mouth. It is time for what has been silenced to be heard. It is enough. It is enough. It is enough. The passage to open our voice once again. In her message, she stresses more than once the interplay between a man and a woman. The polarity in diminishing the other part has brought us here today 
in this world that is totally manipulated. Shall we keep on playing this game of polarities by killing the others? Or should we once and for all to embrace the differences, the diversity, so that we can finally be one as man and woman. My final message. If I ever say to a person, I love you, as a man, as a woman, as a brother, as a sister, as my tribe family, my soul family, it is not I love you. It is I love. I love regardless who you are, what you represent, without condition, without expectation. Let this love, this cosmic love be you. Let this love to come through you. To share it through your whole beings that is the only way out for us to resolve once and for all all polarities all differences I love you because I love from my heart to yours, Akata. Thank you. Amen.